Hello everyone, it's Catrice here and I welcome you to this new video. And oh man, Christrons, am I right? Well, these past days have been a treat. And it's very exciting to talk about this. Christrons are going through a major change. Yes, we've already reviewed the five cars. You got my semi-blind reaction to them. But I've got to say, all of them are awesome. Like, all of them are absolutely insane. Every, every five, each of the five, is so important to the new strategy, which I will talk about in a second, that, God, you, you can't really imagine a Crystron deck without these five cards now. They have definitely flipped the game on its head. It's There's no other way to say it. Um, before we talk about um, before we talk about this deck in particular, I have a few shoutouts to make. Uh, the first of which is to Kyrie, my dear friend and the turtle goddess, which some of you might know from posts of yoga organization. Uh, she introduced me to a Crystron Discord server, w which is very focused on every different kind of Crystron deck there is. And let me tell you, this server has been cooking. I owe some of the insight that I uh, can give you now to that place. So, what you are going to hear in this video is not just my own opinion. It's not just... Okay, it is just my own opinion, but it is informed by partially the people of that server and most of which in that server it is owed to the user Bellbind who has been testing tirelessly and endlessly with different builds, different techs and even some, even the main tech of this deck has been inspired by Bellbind which is the same tech they are currently testing with. So I cannot take full credit for this at all. In my, uh, I have been simply way too busy in the past days with work and everything else that's going on in my life right now to really get big into testing. I did some testing and I did some lines for myself, but Bellbind worked so well and they did so many testings with so many different, uh, you know, so many different techs and so many different engines. Uh, <laughs> I couldn't quite keep up, gotta tell you right there. But my worst shoutouts out of the way. I want to talk about Crystrons, and yes, as I said earlier, the five cards are all absolutely awesome. Soft and Hole is insanely good, the mill too is super potent, but also super painful to get ashed on, let me tell you that. Um, being another five that you can easily summon with its own effect means that you have now a very easy way to go into either Summon Dragon Infinity, or, and this is something I didn't think about it at first, uh, or you can just go to an infinite track um, River Stormer, this card right here, to search for Farian's King Regulus to set up an early negate, even better, of a fourth summon. And this has an added bonus that if you don't have to use Regulus, and you can keep the, uh, the Salt Bath near the next turn, you can pop it with the, uh, the Cluster. So you have the Salt Bath near float in the opponent's turn, to get another possible disruption out. One thing that really um, that really changed for the main deck ratios, you're, you're seeing one to three, this was formerly a three off in every single build, and you don't see any other tuner than Citri or the new Tristalos. And yes, Tristalos completely flipped the game, just like Salford Hole. Uh, Tristalos now is the very best tuner in the deck, both for its on-field effect and its graveyard effect, because that one is absolutely bonkers. Getting to pop a Synchro and summon two, which usually with Crystron Synchros mean you pop a third card as well. Uh, summon a third card as well, since all of the Crystron Synchros float on being destroyed by card effect. So you have very big outlets to go big. Like, with be between Salford Hole and Tristalos, your ability to go wide is so strong that five monster zones sometimes feel like nothing, since you still need three open monster zones to go for your, uh, go for your tuner plays in the opponent's turn. But yeah, this card is also absolutely epic. Same goes for inclusion, but this is more like a very standard thing. Inclusion very good for the sole reason of it being a searcher. 
But also the graveyard, uh, graveyard deck, banishing it to summon a crystal monster in the graveyard. Uh, I will show you a few replays in a second where we can uh, where we can talk about the applications. But let me just tell you that both effects of this are insanely important, and you really need them to uh, to really play this deck in its full capacity. Uh, I've already touched on Cluster a little bit. Cluster is really, really good again. Uh, it protects your crystals from being banished, which is such a random protection to have, but hey, it's welcome. And uh, it makes it so that it, it makes it so you, that you have a spell trap, or um, this, in this case, just trap-based interaction piece on your board, which can pop one to two cards. And again, very, very potent. Especially because you don't have to pop your opponent's cards, you can pop your own cards, and which this comes into play when you have, as I said, Voraculus of South Fafnir. You can just pop the South Fafnir of Cluster, and if you have a Crystal and Synchro out, you can pop your South Fafnir and another card. Like, you have Quarian already out? Okay, I pop, uh, I'll pop my South Fafnir and your card. So now I get my C3 from the deck, and the C3 can now Synchro from, uh, with the South Fafnir now in the graveyard to make AFA Dawn Rexter, and boom! Yet another disruption. Really, really powerful. And lastly, we've got Alice Skeletus, which is a card I, I kind of um, underrated at the start. Like, yes, the first effect is still very nothing burger, but uh, you still have the recursion, like on, on Synchro Summon, getting a Crystal card from Graveyard or Banish. But you also have the, uh, the float, if we scroll here. You still have a float that every crystal monster, every crystal synchro has, but this can summon any crystal monster from a graveyard or banishment. So again, comes insanely well with Tristalos. You banish with Tristalos, you summon two bodies, and then you just summon back the banished Tristalos. So it's still in play. You don't have, to, you're not rid of it yet. Insanely strong stuff. Uh, talking about techs that we already tried. Uh, first off, let's talk about the Kashtira tech, which I'm running in my deck right now, and you see a big Kashtira engine. Three wave so one Fenrir, one, Kish uh, one Tier Kash. And uh, this is again thanks to Bellbind. Th uh, that is uh, their idea, and it is an insanely good one, let me tell you about it. Uh, the first replay I'm going to show you in a second really shows what you can do if you have two, t uh, two Kash names, which is why it's so important to run more ways to names. Ideally, I would run 40 cards, but it Really wasn't possible with all, with all the non engine I wanted to play, so. Um, yeah, I'm running three, uh, SSF, three Fenrir, one Tier, and one Grace of. Really good combo because it has a flexibility and it has the ability to go second. Flexibility in the sense that if you just open uh, Fenrir and one of your normal summons, you're, you're set for life, and you get, uh, you get SP to protect yourself at all from. Uh, from targeting effects because you can just banish it, which is very good. Um, because with mill two is very important. Like Ash, you can bait out earlier in many hands, but to be up infirm you can't. And when basically you send Fenrir and your normal summon into SP, Fenrir search the tier cache before you go for the tier cache, get your free random mills, which still can hit something really really good like you hit a smiger or you hit an inclusion you hit a card that you would like would have liked to drop off self at all but there are so many cards that are good to drop off self at all that you're quite happy to not have to mill them <laughs> if that makes sense to you so yeah then you have a tier cache on board which is another card you can just link away i usually link away the tier cache and the sp for the, for the sprint and sprint mills the uh, mirror, ma uh, mirror mage, which is a very easy include, which searches for freezing chains, and then you have a level two tuner on the board. You, you turn your level seven into a level two tuner and a sprint, which in some hands is also a interruption, but in most hands it's just a piece you can pop with a crystal. Uh, Text are also uh, additionally to the to the Fenrir te uh, Fenrir tech. In addition to the Kashtira attack, you could run a Rice Heart. Rice Heart of a deck makes it so that your one that your one Fenrir in your hand is always full combo because then you can go into Draco Sack, which is what you do when you have two Kash out. And Draco Sack is Cherubini, and Cherubini is Smiger, and Smiger is Occlusion, and Occlusion is full combo. <laughs> Easy as that. 
And also Dracosec is a removal piece if you go second, so it's even better than like so many applications here again. But yeah, Rysard, uh normal summon, turning it into a level 7 and then go go to town really. I also tried the Scrap Recycler, and that's still a viable card to run. But it's more so if you try to run full pure. S same as Swap Frog, it's also a good card to run because it makes totally awesome rather, uh, rather early using the Mirror Mage. The, the big downside is that you don't have a Mirror Mage for Synchro Plays later, since you've already dumped it with the Swap Frog to get the Totally Elf. So I cut the Swap Frog since I already get to summon my big boy Fairy King Regulus before my fifth summon, so I don't need any mirror protection and I just need to be smart to play through overhead traps. Some people have tried with mill decks, like uh, with Grass, which again, interesting idea. Uh, milling is always good in this deck, but you also don't want to mill too much. But again, it brings you to your resources. Inclusion is a great mill because it summons one from a graveyard, so if you mill Inclusion and solve it whole, you suddenly have a really, really good hand there. And you still have four up, a uh, really, really good play there. And still you have four, four more cards in your hand, so that's that's absolutely bonkers. And also, if you run the, the grass engine, you can, of course, run more of the side engines. Like, you can run the full Kashira line with a Rise Heart. You can run a level uh, level 3 spam with Speed by Terra Top and the Adventure Engine. Which is also good, because the Adventure Engine grants you another way to any gate. Griffin Rider is also level 7, so you can actually co uh, combo it with a, with a cash card. And you, you're already just on a good place there. And also you don't need the uh, effect of a normal summon monster that much. You usually normal summon like a Tristalos to insulate your place further. Like, you have a Tristalos in your hand and a South Fafnir that can summon itself without it. Yeah sure, I normal summon a Tristalos, go for the South line if I get Ash there. I use my Tristalos to still get my Salvage Hole from the deck on the board, get to uh, Elder Skeletus, then pop the Elder Skeletus to form a Salvage Hole and go off. Like, that, that's so stupid. Like, I mean, it's so great. It, it is stupid, but it's also so great. I don't even have to use the uh, Salvage Hole there yet. I can just go for Tristalos. Tristalos summons a Smiger and something else, then Salvage Hole pops the Smiger. Drops two and Smiger searches. I think that's a smarter play. But you see what I mean. You have you have decent ways to to play for disruption. Uh, another part of a level three spam will be Gold Frights, Funnily enough, because you have got Chariot Carry, not Chariot Carry. You have uh, Gold uh, Girl Pride, Captain Pat Carry, and Gold Pride Leon, which also level three cards. One of them is a tuner. One of them isn't. Some people have been trying with Runic. I'm personally not a fan of Runic as a whole. So I haven't, but the theory is basically the same, like uh, same as the theory behind uh, Ice Barrier Runic. You have your base combo, which is just a little bit fragile. It is actually very fragile in this case because you don't run other mitigation cards. But you you run your main combo, which is a bit fragile, and then you have the Runic cards to back it up. Next up, you can also run uh, Gen Cliff of Genius because Trist always triggers it but with its Breaker effect. I've been running it at, at the start for Regulus, but it just gets to Regulus way too late. But you can also do funny stuff like Spell Canceler, because you don't need your normal summon that much, so you can just search and normal summon the Spell Canceler. And damn, your opponent now is locked out of every spell. <laughs> and yeah, again, this is very, very funny. So, and one person has been trying around with Gen X. I have no idea how that works, but they have tried. One Gen X card that is worth running though is Arms of Gen X Return Zero. A very underrated card currently, but it's insane. It is basically, well, it's not a Barone because it cannot negate spell traps, but it's basically an Apollosa if you set up your grave right. Especially if you insulate with hand traps, like I, I just got an Ash or something, now I have a negate for fire cards, which means that your card is now, uh, your uh, Snake Eyes cards are now even weaker to me. Like, great card. I wish I had space for it, but as you can see, my extra is very tight. I am thinking about dropping the Trishula, actually. Because with Tristalos, you cannot summon Trishula and get its effect, since it will miss timing. And I'm not really running other applications to go into it. But... I think we've already spent a lot of time on this deck list. Let's go into the 
Oh yeah, I didn't really do anything here. Let's go into the replace real, real quick. And I've got them here. Now, keep in mind, these are... Uh, these are... Solo mode replays. I've been trying to get replays in for the... Uh, in a 1v1 setting, but... Gee! Fi finding an opponent that is willing to sit through a Crystron combo... Uh, I'm gonna pause right here. Finding an opponent that's uh, that's willing to go for a Crystron combo... Kind of difficult currently. Most people quit before you have a chance to really show them what's up. And also it's a bit difficult to pilot without a lot of practice. Since you really have to understand the lines before you go into it. Talking about the lines, we've already seen like the setup of one of them. This is what the two Kishira name combo does. I used to be foolish to do this, since my hand was really good still without using the foolish. So uh, without using the foolish for for the crystal name. So let's just see what it gets us. Now we have the Chirabini on board. We get the inclusion. Now we always want to search for Salpef here. Because self Hold Summon locks us into machine, self Hefnir does not. So now we can go into our regular combo mill too. In this case I milled the spell Avatrap. I don't have a, uh, I didn't pop the spell yet, so I need to spell my graveyard to resummon the self Hefnir here. Go into Riverstormer, Riverstormer to Regulus, get the Regulus. And up until here, we haven't really committed to big resources, so any Vero before this does absolutely nothing to us. It doesn't do it doesn't hinder us at all, since we still have all our resources in the graveyard and a inclusion up. So we're very, very sad. Uh, now we go to Sprint, Sprint drops this, this searches this. Like, your lines are very fluid, in a way that you can turn everything into almost everything. And here's where things get hard, because I still have to kind of figure out how to play it with my vault space, so I decided to search and pressy for this line. And I didn't even... Let's check field. And I didn't even use Tristano's Grave Effect because my field was too full. Because I wanted to keep the Draco Sack for the Sprint Bounce. And now I still have the... Uh, I still have the Tristano's in the Graveyard for a later time. Now, what what do I have on the board? This is now a bit important to understand. Uh, what I have on the board now is basically I have a Bounce. I have a Synchro with these two into... Um, the Ass Dragon, which then quick synchros into Satellite Warrior, which is a pop 4 in this case already. Uh, then I still have Cluster up. I can Cluster early, so that I can still pop 2 with this. But since Satellite Warrior is a pop 4, we don't really need it. This is an example of I kinda would like to have Genix Return 0, because then it would make sense to pop first, get uh, Get Tristalos out of the day, and then on resolution go into Quandex. Oh wait, no, I can't do it first because I need access to Never mind. I uh, I messed up my head there, but that's that's okay. Uh, but yeah, Genix Return Zero is still a great card, but not here. <laughs> a lot of parts are made uh, have to be made. Genix Return Zero needs a Dark Tuner, and I don't have that available without access Synchro being on the board. Anyway. Yeah, you already have a pop 4, so you can just pop 4 in this first, then use a cluster to pop a salt death near to get the, tris the Tristalos out. And then have another shot at making an FA Dawn Dragster. So this is a pop 4, a pop, uh, a spelly gate, and a bounce, and a an Nomni. Which is still great. And there's two head uh, there's two cards in our hand that we haven't shown yet, which are also both interruptions. Like this head was absolutely killer, of course, it went for no interruptions. But sometimes you go through, sometimes you don't. And if you don't go through, you have to alter your line in a way in which you can at least end on something and still be insulated with those two cards. Like, there, there are enough opportunities to, to change up your play. This deck is very, very freeform. Um, but, dude, as I said, you're not really hard pressed for, for options here. Now this is a hand that is a bit more unfortunate, and I'm pretty sure I played this very suboptimally. In general, I don't, uh, I'm not going to say that I played this optimally since this deck is hard to play. This deck is really hard to play now. Well, I, I, here I go for Regulus later, because I don't have the Crystal names in my graveyard to really uh, afford to already equip the sub earlier, but we still didn't really commit to much 
So we can still do this. We use the Tristalos Shuffle to get this on the board. And uh, this basically means... If we just check the oak again. I misplayed here by searching a Tristalos. I have one more uh, I have one more Tristalos here than I should since so I don't have a card to summon of uh, I don't have a tutor to summon of Tristalos anymore. But you still can do most things. You could just summon the press the auto from the deck. I think that's still up. No, that's also not up anymore. Ooh. Yeah, well for Tristalos in hand I really messed up there, but I wanted to show what you can do on the suboptimal hand. I searched this one, I know. So that's my own fault. But you basically, if this is in the deck you have any other card in your hand, you have a Quarian Gundrex here with the two Tristalos and this, and then you can make it FA Dawn Jaxa. So you again, you have Banish Free, and you have a Spelligate, and you have an Omni, and you have like three Hand Trap Interruptions here. So it ends up being pretty good, but it was a very rough combo and it was a very fragile combo. And now I have one more that only show, that shows what you have what you can do if you only have one Kosh. So this is a combo that's uh, safer, but has a somewhat lower output, I would say. Again, I cannot play the lines optimally because I'm still overwhelmed by the amount of options that you have. But most options still land you a very decent board and what you do with it is really up to yourself. The important part is again, you remember, don't use your self at all too early. self at all locks you into machines if you summon it by its own effect. Summon it first of Salt Fafnir and then when you need it, like now, you go with Patricios, get it back, and go from there. And I went into this board, and again, this is <laughs> this is an incredibly good board. We do have a sprint up here, but we do have a, a, the Satellite Warrior line. We can pop our South Fafnir for Tristalos again to get um, uh, for, for another Tristalos to also have a Quarian lineup. Since the Tristalos can just summon a 5 from the deck and turn a 5 and the C3 into something. Or we just turn a C3 into an FA Dawn Rexer if we wanted to. And then the Tristalos into I don't I don't even know. Then the, then the Tristalos into an Exos Synchro. The Exos Synchrons uh, after the spell negate can then go into the Satellite Warrior. Or if we had it, into a into a Genix. And again, this is insane. This is really really good. And then the next turn, well, if we do that, what do we have in graveyard? We have this in the graveyard. We have. One of the three in the graveyard if we went from the Genix line or the Satellite Warrior line. So we can go off again. We still have one of the inclusions in our hand. We still have a cluster which can pop a Synchro Monster to float. Like, we have so many options here. It's insane. And that's... That also explains why I'm not too uh, active in making videos right now uh, for this. It's not just the amount of time I have, but that factors in in multiple ways. It's just how complex this deck has become. Five cards were enough to turn this deck from a funny little I summon one I summon one monster and one tuner and pass, or I summon one tuner and set one trap and pass, into oh boy I do big combo and also have the same thing I have uh, I had in 2017 but insulated with so much more, which was exactly what this deck needed to be playable in at least a rogue matter nowadays, in 2024, because the game has advanced, the game has been becoming very very fast, it's uh, it's one of the reasons why I haven't played Chris Rons in a while, and in real life I currently play Voiceless Voice, because Voiceless Voice also has a mid-range playstyle like Chris Rons had back in the day, but also has uh, a lot of insulation, a lot of extension, and a lot of ways to play for interruptions. And with the new support, Crystrons can be quite similar, but in a different playstyle. But this is enough gushing, we're already almost at 25 minutes, and honestly, I want to just free you from these chains. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed this video, this rambling of mine. I hope some things I said were... Uh, eloquent enough and uh, explained enough for you to understand because 
Honestly, even in my head, some of this seems a bit overwhelming, and maybe you can make better sense of it. Please don't be mad at me if I did a combo that was non-optimal, because I too am still learning. And I hope you just have a wonderful day and a wonderful time with these new Crystron cards, because they are so insanely good. But until then, until next time, where I hopefully have some play, uh, 1v1 w w replays with actual people, I wish you a very, very nice day, and stay ravened. Bye-bye.